Welcome back to another Figma Friday. My name is Elliot, and today we're going to be talking about interactive components in Figma. So interactive components has been in beta for the last eight months, and it's finally here for all editors, which is super exciting. Interactive components is a really cool feature that allows you to define prototyping connections between variants in a component set such as an auto layout button shifting between different states. We can publish and reuse the variants in our designs like normal, but their instances inherit those interactions by default without our need to recreate new interactions. This is really cool because what this means is that instead of creating a mess of frames to account for all possible interactions in a prototype, we only need one frame, which is awesome. So. Think about all of the different frames you would need to have all these toggle switches, this interactive slider, and these button variants up here. We can do all of this in one frame. And I'll show you how here. One thing that's key to this is being able to create component sets. So to create a component set, we've gone into detail on this in the past, but a quick reminder, if you have your button here, you can go up to the component button, and now we can create a variant over on the side. So let's create a variant. And this variant is going to be the hover variant. And so we'll change this to a hover state. And then we'll also create one more variant of this to be then the click state. So we'll call that click. And let's change the color here from dark gray, from white to green, and then let's make the text uh, white so it pops a little bit more. Now that we have our component set, we can go into the prototyping feature, and if you click on the first button, you can grab this blue node and drag the interaction noodle to the hover state, and this will pull up the interactions detail dialog page. So we want this to be, instead of on click, we can do it um, while hovering. You can also do while press, which is a cool feature, but we'll do while hovering. And then we'll also drag from the hovering state down to the click state, and that will be on click. And you can also change how you want that to animate, but this will work fine for now. So if I come over here, you can see when I hover, it changes over to a label like that, which is really cool. And you can have that on all of the different ones. We can do the same thing for the toggle switch. So let's take this toggle frame and this is toggled off at the, at the moment. So let's create a toggle on variant. Let's create that variant. And we'll pull the circle over to the right. We'll change the inside to be green as well. And then let's change the inside of this instead of white. Let's make that a muted green. Same thing now. You come over, you select your state, go to the prototyping feature, pull that node down. And instead of on click, now why don't we do this on drag? So we can do on drag, and for the animation style, we have it on smart animate. So the smart animate, what that allows is that it's registering that in this first variant on the default one, and in the toggle, we have the ellipse, and then we have the rectangle 600. And then on our variant, we also have the ellipse and rectangle 600. So what that's doing is that that's recognizing that this this particular element is the same as this element, and where it changes, then it will automate that accordingly. So if we come back over here, we can see how it slides over. And that's a lot cleaner interaction than if it just switched over. You can also do that for the slider. So let's do that again, create a component, Go back to design, add a variant, and 
We want this to move over when you click or slide and the dot then. So this is what's important here to remember. When you're creating this, like I said before, it knows when you do the auto animate, it's going to register all this naming. So I have dot one here, dot two. And an easy way to create this would be to, instead of resizing this to be that same size, you can just drag it over. But because now that it's out of order, when the interaction occurs, these dots are gonna switch spots. So what we can do, let's just rename this to two instead of three, and this two, change that to three. Now it's recognizing that this two is the same as this two, and this three is the same as this three. So now these dots will not switch spots, and they will um, instead change their property, which is their size in this case. And let's just change this line to grow as it moves over. There we go. And same thing as before. When we click on the first variant, go to prototype, grab the node, pull it over, and let's have that on click. Smart animate, so that as it slides on over, and we'll change this label to 50. Perfect. So if we jump over to the interaction, we can see how that looks. Pull it over, and it slides on by, which is pretty cool. I actually did this before, so we can take a look at what all of that looks like. And as you can see, it gets pretty messy with all of these different ones. These are all the different states that it can be. If you jump from the label 100 all the way to 25, or 25 to 75, so on and so forth. And again, to reiterate, this is an amazing feature because it allows you to have one frame, one prototyping frame. Instead of having, I don't know, this is like eight here, if not more, plus then all the different variations for the label button and all the, also the toggle switch. Pretty cool. So the last thing that I'm gonna show you, which I also really like, is having a drag feature if you wanted to rotate an image. So obviously to rotate an image to have the different sizes, you have to have different frames of the different shots, right? So we have the side shot slowly rotating each frame over and over and over. And so to create this, what I did is each of the components within the car are labeled differently because they're the different variants, right? But the components inside of each one is just the image itself, which I called shot in each of them. Again, this goes back to what I keep on uh, reiterating on is this allows the smart animation to register that what's in the variant is changing rather than a completely new components within each of the variants. So to prototype this, I did the same thing as before, right? We go in and this one is on drag and it's on smart animate and you can change also the duration of that animation. I wanted it to be a little bit more snappy. And if we come back over to the prototype on drag, you can see that the car rotates. And this is pretty cool. You can use this for a number of different things. I decided to have it on the car itself, um, but you could use it in many different applications. I think it's pretty much endless. Well, thank you for your time. I hope that you really enjoy using interactive components to make your prototyping that much more simple. It's a great feature and I'm so happy to see that it's out there for all users now, not just uh, if you ask to be a part of the beta testing. Drop us a comment if you have any questions, and we'd love to address those questions in future videos. Hope you enjoy the Figma Friday, and we will catch you next time. Thanks so much.